Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video um, we're going to be doing a tutorial for beginners in the C++ programming language. Now in this video we're going to be building a very basic application. It's going to be a, a little calculator that can do basic arithmetic and it's going to work in the console so we're not going to be implementing graphics or anything. It's just going to be in the console. So. Um, it's just a nice little beginner tutorial to get you started on C++ syntax and really understand how the language works. We're going to be using, utilizing for loops and like functions and stuff. And so everything's just going to be a very basic tutorial where we'll be building a basic calculator in the console using the C++ programming language. So make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and... Tell me in the comments if you enjoyed this video at the end of the video. So now let's get into it. So first thing that you're going to do is we're going to create a folder in our desktop or anywhere in your computer that you want to have this folder in. So just find an empty space for a folder. We're going to hit new folder. Then we're going to create a folder. And this folder is just the name of our project. And so I'm just going to be calling it calculator video dash video or whatever you can name it whatever you want for the purpose of this tutorial i'm just going to name it calculator video. now that we have this video now that we have this uh folder sorry we're going to open up our favorite text editor or code editor of choice now i'll be using visual studio code you guys can use whatever text editor that you have or ide that you want and yeah so open up your favorite text editor or IDE and I'll be opening up Visual Studio Code for this tutorial. Once it loads up, we're going to hit File, Open Folder, so see this part? And then we're going to be opening up our the folder that we just created in the desktop. And as you can see, this is my folder, and you're going to click on the folder that you just created, and you're going to select the folder. And once this loads up, this will be essentially our workspace. Alright, so now that our IDE loaded up our workspace, we're going to X the welcome button, and this is our workspace, so our folder. We're going to create a new file in our folder, and we're going to call it in our, the thing that we just opened up, which is our workspace. And we're going to call it main.cpp or whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to call it calculator.cpp. And this essentially is the file we're going to be writing all of our code in. We won't be making any extra files because as I said, this is just in one file because it's a basic tutorial. So we'll just be using this one file to code everything. So you're going to name it calculator.cpp or you can name it whatever you want, but it just needs the .cpp extension as that is C++. So we're going to create calculator.cpp, hit enter. And now that we have the file, we're going to get started. So as always, let's create our basic file setup. So we're going to do hash tag include less than and greater than bracket um, signs. And then we're going to type in the thing that we want to include in this case, IO stream. Now, usually we would just have IO stream, but for the tutorial, we need a second dependency. And this is called this package that I need is CMAP. Now, CMAP is a library in C++ that has a lot of mathematical functions that we can use. So CMAP is what we're going to be using for the purpose of this calculator. So we're just going to include CMAP. So hashtag include CMAP. Once we write this hashtag include CMAP, everything in the CMAP file, we can have access to it. So now that we've included the two dependencies that we need, we're just going to be using namespace std because I don't want to type in std colon colon then whatever function that we need. So we're going to type in using namespace std, all right, the semicolon at the end as always. And the reason why I'm going over the basic syntax alongside this tutorial is because I really want this tutorial to be something for beginners. So I know there's a lot of like beginners in my channel as I've been seeing because I have one playlist that's on the basics of C++. And so I know that there's beginners in this channel. And the reason why I'm making this tutorial is centered around getting beginners. So getting beginners in C++ 
started on their very first project. And that's why I'm, ba I'm building this very basic calculator that can perform some simple arithmetic to us. We won't go too complex. So now we're going to create our int main function. So that's the reason why I'm just going over the very bare bones syntax. So int main essentially is what allows all of our programs to execute. So without int main, um, no code will run. Okay, so create the int main function. And now um, let's continue. So this is our basic setup. We have the dependencies that we need. We're using namespace st. And so first, um, we're going to create a class. And this class is called application. So if and there's any beginners in this video who that do not know object oriented programming, I would suggest um, go to go learning object oriented programming in C++, but just stay tuned because in future videos in my channel, I will have object oriented programming in C++. So we're going to create a class. So if you don't know what object oriented programming is in C++, you don't know classes and objects, then please find another channel to look at or another tutorial because I don't have that yet in my YouTube channel. In the future, I will be posting a video on object-oriented programming in C++, where we'll, go, we'll be going through classes. But here, you, you can just follow along. So we're going to make a class called application. Now, applica the class application is essentially going to have one method. That method is called run. And that method would basically just be our entire thing. So we're going to create a class called application. Again, we'll put a symbol. So now that we have our class application, we're going to write we're going to give our access specifier. In this case, I want it to be public. So put public, a semicolon, and then indent. So now this class's public elements will be underneath the indent. Now that we create our class application and we put the specifier, we're going to make our method. So this class will only have one method, and this method will be a super long method because our entire calculator program will be inside of this class application and inside of the method run. So we're going to call, I'm just going to create a method void run. Oh, my bad guys. And now we're just going to print out some text. So CL, we're going to say calculator. And that's going to be and then just to make things easier, I'm just going to create a function over here called void ln, ln representing line. So we want spacing in our program. So we don't want everything to print in a single line. So we're just going to create a little function to make things easier. Instead of always typing out backslash n, we can just create a function called ln that stands for line that will create, that will just return or that will just print out a new line to the console. So void ln, see out, less than, less than, and then we'll just put a backslash n character there. All right, so this will give us a new line. So now, calculator. And before that, we're just going to call the ln function. So just give some line. So every time we want to make a line or some spacing, we'll just call the ln function, which we'll print out. So now that we have the title of our application, I want another new line. And then, um, so we're going to create, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create an array. This array will store all of the operations, the valid operations in our program. So we're going to say string, string operations is equal to an array. Okay. And we won't specify a length. We'll just make it like that so we can have as much elements as possible. So now that we have string operations, we're going to add our semicolon. And yeah, I'm going to do this. And the first operation is addition. So we can put a plus sign over there. The second operation I want is subtraction. So we can just put a dash for subtraction. It's a character inside of the quotation marks, a comma. Now, the next thing I want is multiplication. So I'll add the asterisk. Now, you guys may know that the asterisk is for multiplication in computers. So the next string will be a slash. The slash is for division. Okay, so these are our four basic arithmetic operators. The next thing I want to have is an exponent operator. So we'll just call this pow, and pow represents power. So if the user types in pow, that means they're they're giving our program the input of they want to. 
they want to calculate exponents. So if the user types in pow, that's for exponents. So the, just keep in mind that we're typing in pow for power. So this little pow thing over here is going to give us, um, allows the user to calculate exponents. So we got plus, minus, asterisk, slash, asterisk, and slash multiplication and division. Pow for power, so exponents. Next thing I want is um, square root. So for square root, we're just going to type in SQRT for short form. Create a new string and let's see over here. What other possible basic arithmetic should we have? Um, so we've got these. We could try, let's say, hypot. Now, hypot is just hypot is short form for hypotenuse. So we can just create a little function that takes in the formula to find the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle using Pythagoras' theorem. That's what hypot will calculate. Now, the next thing I want in my calculator is um, circumference. So we'll just type in circumference. We're not going to put in things short form like how I did with sqrt for square root and hypot for hypotenuse. We're just going to type in the full word circumference. And that is all the operators we'll be having in our basic calculator, because I think that's enough to cover basic arithmetic. Usually users would find these basic in a simple calculator, because this is not like a big fat scientific calculator, this is a, ve a very simple basic calculator program that we're implementing. So we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponent, square roots, hypo the hypotenuse of right angle triangle, and circumference. We could in implement leg A and leg B, but they can easily just, you know, reverse that. The square root of uh, C minus B. So when C takes away one of the legs, but we don't need to do that. We'll just have the hypotenuse. We don't need to worry about the other ones. Okay, so we've got, so these are the operators we have in our calculator program. And this array will be holding all the valid operators. Now we're going to do, we're going to create two variables and they're going to be type integer. So we're going to type in int num1, standing for number one, int num2. The reason why I'm setting up int num1 and int num2 and declaring them is because we want to apply all of these operations to one or two num to either two numbers or just one number. And so for example, like plus, we would be taking in the input of num1 and num2, the variables. For like these operations, we would be taking in num1 and num2. So, and then these operations over here, like square root, it only takes in one number because it's just finding the square root of x. And then hypotenuse would take in num1 and num2. So like we can choose to use both of these variables or just one depending on the operation that we're performing. Now that we've created two variables of type int, integer, um, let's get started. So, we're going to create a string, and that string is the input from the user. So we're going to say string Actually, I don't think we need that. Sorry guys, my bad. I was just, you know, trying to think of where we're at right now. So the next thing we have to do is we're going to check if the user um, put in put in either one of these operations. So I'm going to create a little print statement over here. I'm going to say, choose an operation inside of string. Now that we have choose an operation, we're going to create a new line, ln, semicolon. So now that we gave like this little dialog in the console, choose an operation, let's just add a semicolon and then a space. Now the space is called string concatenation so that when the user types in, there'll just be a small space or like a character, an empty character, so that it looks more natural and not like clumped up together. So just type in, choose an operation in space. So just string concatenation, which is good practice most of the time. So now that we have choose an operation, we're asking the user to choose an operation. We're gonna check if they chose one of the valid operation, operations that exists in this operation list. So we're gonna create an if statement. Now the if statement is going to check if whatever operation they chose was not was a valid operation. So now see out choose an operation. So now that we're giving them a dialog for choose an operation, we need to take in some input from that. So choose an operation. We're going to create a string variable called operation. String operation semicolon. Now we're going to do c in. Now c out c out prints up to the console. C in gets 
user input from the console. So C in is the insertion operator, C out is the output operator. So we're gonna type in C in, and instead of um, less than sign, C in gives in greater than signs to show that we're getting input from the user instead of output from the user. So C out and C in. Now C in operation. So what we're doing essentially is we're saying choose an operation, and then we're getting input through this variable that we declared operation. Now what we need to now that we need to do that we got input from the user is we need to check if this input is valid. So if this input is either addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or these characters that we have inside of this array of the valid operations in our program, um, we need to create this little um, if statement. It's going to be like about you know maybe eleven if statements or nine if statements put together, and that's just inside of this large method called run. Okay. All right, so now what we're essentially doing is checking if the operation they gave in the console is a valid operation. And essentially what valid operation is, in our case, is an operation that exists. So any operation that they put in must exist in this list or else we'll say, we'll give some sort of error. We'll say a uh, user has typed in an invalid operation or we'll say to them, hey, you put an invalid operation, please check our list of operations. And then when they see that list, they'll see what operations are available in this calculator. So now if, we're going to create an if statement. Now since this is aimed towards beginners, if statements, um, if statements technically do this. So the basic structure of an if statement, let's just write some pseudocode over here. The basic structure of an if statement is you type in the keyword if if then you type in two pairs of brackets and then you type in two pairs of curly brackets now inside of the two parentheses if and then right beside the if two parentheses comes a condition if condition equals equals true so if the condition inside of these parentheses so you write if and then right after if you write a pair of parentheses and then inside of these parentheses, parentheses, you write a condition. And basically what the program, what C++ will do, or most pro, what programming languages will do is, if this condition inside of, so this is your condition inside of these parentheses. If this condition is true, then whatever is inside of these curly braces, execute this. So basically how an if statement works is if two parentheses, two brackets. If whatever is in the brackets, which is this condition, if this condition is true, then do this. So if whatever condition I put inside of these parentheses is true, so only if it's true, then execute the code inside of these curly braces. Otherwise, do not ignore this if statement. So if condition is true, execute this. Otherwise, do not execute this. Okay, so now we're going to be checking if the operation they put in is a valid operation. So first if statement, just follow along, guys. If first thing is we're going to check if it's addition and how we count arrays in C++ essentially goes in this order. So you might count the elements inside of this array. So this little plus over here would be one. So you'll count as this. So in order to know how much elements are inside of this operations array, um, we would have to start from zero because computers read from zero and then go higher. They don't start from one. So I would, a normal beginner would read it as this in order to count the amount of elements, they would go by hand and do like this. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements. They would say that there's eight elements in this array, but to, to the computer, there's actually nine elements in this array because this first element, this plus sign that we have over here is actually represented as the zeroth element of this array. So we start from zero and then we count. So essentially, instead of there being eight operations, and even though you see eight elements in over here, to the computer, it's I mean, instead of seeing nine operation, nine elements, the computer would read it as eight because it starts from zero. So then if operations, if operation, so we're checking if the operation that they have equals equals. Now what equals equals does is it checks if something is equal to something else. Equals equals is the comparison operator. So I won't be covering that because I'm assuming that you're a bit higher than super basics. So if operation equals equals operations one, so index by zero, then it would be addition, right? Okay. And then we'll just create if statements for everything else. And let's do that process right now. So if operation equals oper operations index by zero, referring to the plus sign, then we're going to do some code. We're going to execute this. 
Um, we're just going to print out that they chose this. See out user choice addition. So just follow along with me. Right now what we're doing is we're just going to perform the calculators, calculations for every single operation, whether it's that. So user choice addition, it's referring to that. And then new line, and then we'll say number one. So right now we're taking in the first number. C in first num one. So you can see how this works. C out. Number two, we're getting input for the second number. And C in num two. Now that we've gotten the inputs from num one and num two, so whatever the user inputted to the console, we're going to perform addition. So we're going to create a function addition that takes in two arguments. So the addition function that we're um, going to create in the future right now is going to be num1 and num2. That's exactly how simple the implementation can be when creating something like this. So we take in the input for number one, number two, and then we print out a function that takes in these num1 and num2 as arguments and then returns a value from them. So addition, num1, num2. And now we're just going to create a function for addition. We're going to call int addition going to create our pair of curly braces and then we're going to say return so the return type the parameters will be num1 return num1 plus num2 semicolon Okay, so we just create a function that does addition, takes in two parameters, and in this case, we're applying those two parameters to the inputs that we got from the user, and you can see how this calculation. All we need to do is recopy-paste this if statement, and then apply that to every other operation. So we're just going to copy this huge, this, not huge, but this, like, five line, and we're going to copy it over here. Now, in this case, we're not checking for addition, we're now checking if operation equals equals operations one, which is subtraction. So let's do the exact same thing and change things up. User choice, subtraction. Now number one, number two, and all we need to do is change the function being applied to them. So instead of applying the function addition, we're gonna apply the function subtraction to num1 and num2. And now we're gonna create that function subtraction that takes in two parameters of integer numbers. Call it. In this case, it's just the exact same thing as addition, except it's just num1 minus num2. Recopy paste this if statement. Go over here. Change it to 2. In this case, the second element is multiplication. So user choice, we'll just change this part to be multiplication. Okay. And same thing, multiplication takes in the first number and the second number, and then multiplies both of them. In this case, we're not going to be applying the subtraction function that takes in two arguments, num1, num2. We're going to be applying multiplication. Now, I can just create this function over here that multiplies the two numbers. Literally, all we need to do is we can just copy-paste the subtraction function, function that we create over here, and then change the character from minus to just be the asterisk, and the asterisk will just... Tell the computer to multiply them. All right. The asterisk will just multiply the two arguments, num1 and
Oh, and we have to change the name. Sorry. Okay, so we can copy paste this if statement again. You can see this process gets um, a little bit repetitive, but at the same time, for each operation, you're doing something else. Right? Like as we get to this hypotenuse and stuff, it'll be a bit more complex than just um, changing a character because we would have to implement this. So if operation equals equals operations indexed by three, the third element in this case is division. You change this multiplication to be division. Shake some new parameters. And we're just going to change the type from int, from int to being float. I mean double. The reason why we're not going to be returning a integer value is because for division, um, if we make it type int, then if, say, the, pro the quotient of the division number that... So say the user puts 5 divided by 2, which is 2.5. If we say return type int, it's going to remove the 0.5 and just give us 2. And 5 divided by 2 is not 2, so... We would have to make this double. So in this case, we would have to give it a decimal number if we're doing a division. And that's fine, because if we're if we're doing whole numbers, we can just write it as 4.0 to the computer. Okay. So you're gonna change it from int num1 to double num1. Now we're not using floats because floats have an extra decimal of precision. We're just gonna be using doubles because doubles is the standard decimal number. It's not like super precise. So we can just say return instead of the asterisk for multiplication, we can put the, the backslash or the front forward slash for uh, num1 and num2. So now when we put the slash, it's dividing and not multiplying. So all we did over here is we just changed it from integer to uh, double. So you can change double division, then you can say, say double num1, double num2, then return num1 divided by num2. Then we just print that out. Now in this case, I'm going to change it from num1 to num1f num1f, num1f, and num1f. And now we're going to create two variables, num1f. And this will only happen for division because division will take in not two integer numbers, it will take in two double numbers. So you can type in double num1, double num, num, num2f. f just standing for it being, uh, just to signify that it's different from the int. Okay, so this should make sense. If operations equals equals operations in x by four. In this case, the fourth element. My bad. In this case, the fourth element is. See over here. Is pow. Now, pow, as I said, is for exponents. So, you can just say user choice is equal to. Even though they type in pow, which is for power, we can just say it's an exponent. User choice, in this case, is not division, it's exponent. 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 We can just say exponent. Now, I'll be changing num1f to just num1. All right. Now the exponent function that we're going to create is not going to be taking like just any two num. Basically what the exponent function is going to do is, is the first argument is not just going to be number one. The two arguments is not just going to be number one and number two and then we're just, you know, multiplying them. Like five minus two, num one minus num. That's not what we're doing. In this case, the two arguments aren't just num one and num two. Not They're not just a first number and a second number and then you just apply an operation in between. No. 
The first argument is going to be the base. The second argument is going to be the power. Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to take the base and then multiply by its multiply the base by itself, indicated by the second argument, which is the power. So if I said if I called this function and I said the first argument was five comma two, so five comma two, then it would do five squared because five would be the base and two would be the exponent. So you understand what I mean. So the first uh, argument would be base and the second argument would be the exponent. So we create a new function and we can make an int integer. Int exponent takes an int num one and int num two. In this case, we're just going to be calling a function. We're just going to be calling a function that's built into C++. I won't be dealing with like building our own customizable version of a power function that allows the computer to do exponents. I'm just going to be calling pow. So pow will just take in num1, num2, and then return num1 raised to num2. Okay, that makes sense. So that's what the exponent function will do, which will take the first argument as the base, the second argument as the exponent, and then it will raise the base to be multiplied by itself, indicated by the exponent. Pretty straightforward. Square root. Next thing is the square root. So instead of exponent. You're taking in one argument. The square root doesn't need two numbers. It just needs one number because it's just finding the square root of a single number. It's not doing the square root operation will just be applied to a single number. So just take a number. In this case, we'll just say change the prompt square root of It will return the square root of x, and x is just representing any number. So we just find the square root of any number. So we can calculate square roots now. Now we have hypot. Hypot standing for the hypotenuse. So change this to six. Say user choice. I'll just say hypotenuse of a right angled triangle. We'll change the prompt to be. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to be taking in two inputs, which is the first leg and the second leg. So the two smaller sides in a right angled triangle. So we'll have two inputs. So the first prompt will say leg A, so we would have to type in leg A. Second prompt will say leg B. Just to int a and then int 
B. So this is standing for the legs of the triangle or the two shorter sides, which are um, to the other side of the hypotenuse. So you would have the two legs and then the longest side in the right angle triangle. What this will do is it will find C. And essentially, C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. So we took in two arguments for this function, and then we can just return C. So we're going to create a variable called C. We're just going to say int C is equal to something. And we're just going to return what C is equal to. So int C is equal to SQRT. So we're applying the square root function, the square root, and then brackets. And inside those brackets, we're going to be finding the square root of how, how standing for the power, a and then 2, square root of pow a2. So you would have square root, two brackets. Inside of those two brackets, type in pow and then two brackets. And then inside of those two brackets, a and 2, meaning a squared. And then plus pow. And then pow takes in two arguments, b and then 2, meaning b squared. And then outside of pow a2 plus pow b2, we're applying the square root to all of those things inside of those brackets. So essentially finding the square root of a raised to the power 2, which is a squared, plus um, b raised to the power 2, which is b squared. So it looks a little bit like messy, but um, it will still work. Essentially, it's a bit more complex than the things we did earlier. So just don't forget the brackets. So you would have, just say, pow a, and then the second argument 2 plus pow b, second argument 2, and outside of those um, brackets, you would have another pair of brackets, which is the square root function. So we're applying the square root function to that calculation inside. Okay. So then that would be the hypotenuse, the square root of a squared plus b squared. And then we would just return that variable. Oh, semi. Yeah. The last thing is circumference, and we're just being we're just gonna be taking in one input, which is the radius. And then we're gonna be creating a function called circumference. Circumference. And this will just take be taking in one argument, which is the radius. For, circum for circumference, we're going to be first creating a constant. And constant variables in C++, essentially, in their name, are constant. So if I try going to the bottom of my program and changing the value of this variable, it will, C++ will give me an error because I declared it as a constant variable. So we're going to say const, const representing that. Const int, const double, const double pi, pi in capitals. So we're going to be creating a constant variable that is of type uh, decimal. So const double pi is equal to whatever pi is equal to. So I'm just getting the exact value. So it's a can see it's 3.14159265359. So we're just going to copy paste this value. And then we're going to say const double pi is equal to this value. So now we have a constant variable called pi because pi is a constant. So we can represent that in our C++ program as a constant variable. Now that we created const double pi is equal to 3.14159265359.
and then whatever that number is extra. So we created a constant variable called pi. Now what we need to do is create a variable that will just get returned. So we'll just call string int c is equal to We're just going to create another constant because you always need to do 2 pi r squared. So we'll just say constant int short um, 2 equals 2. Okay. And then we'll just return circum2, which holds the value 2 times asterisk times pi, which is we have the constant defined with pi's full value, times the radius given indicated by the function double radius. Okay, so now that we have our circumference function, we can just apply it. Here we're applying it. And now now that we've went through every single operation, we've created functions for every single operation, and we've returned that value to the user, if they never went through this whole chain of if statements, about 80 lines of code, if they went, never went through this whole chain of if statements, then we'll return an error, and that error, so now that, now that it's looked at all these chains, if it hasn't chose, chosen an operator from this chains, from this entire chain, we'll have an else. Now an else will say, if all of these if statements, their conditions, if all the conditions met by these if statements are not true, then we will execute this else statement. And this else statement will raise a function, an exception. So we'll just say else not valid operation exception. Two parentheses, semicolon. Now we'll just create this function. Over here. The string that we just avoid. Void, not other. And we'll do C out less than less. And we'll just say invalid operation please type in a valid operation from our list of valid operations that can be applied through this calculator now we just put our period and then our semicolon instead of the string. All right, so that makes sense. Now all we need to do is um, make a list that shows all the operations, and then we're done, guys. So just create a new line. So I'm gonna create a new line. Same time I want to say. So we're going to create a for loop. So for int i equals zero, i less than int i <clears throat> int i equals zero, i less than so for int i equals zero, i less than what is it? I less than nine. So let's just check how much elements there are in this array. Because we want to loop through every operation. I less than operations. Operation, so as you can see, my text error gave me the length, which is eight. So I less than eight. So we have eight in this list. So in i equals zero, i less than eight, i plus plus. So what is it saying? Well, i is equal to zero. Now that it's looking at the condition, i is less than eight. Now what should we do to i? i plus plus, meaning i will add one to itself. 
So while i is less than 8, we'll add one more until it reaches 8. And we'll just say, um, all we need to do is print out operations indexed by i. And this will iterate through all the elements in our list, in our array, um, indexed by i, which will go 1, 2, 3, 4, and that will give us a list. Now all we need to do is call the ln function. And last thing, I just want to make it a bit more organized. So we're just going to copy paste the ln function just to give new lines every time there is something. So let's create a new line over here. Create a new line over here. So just in between the input. So like after user choice, after search number, after this. Alright, so that would just make everything nice. And yeah, guys, we have completed a calculator in the C++ programming language. A calculator that can do basic arithmetic alongside some of the scientific calculator's functions. For example, we can calculate um, the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. We can calculate exponents. We can also calculate uh, circumference. So those are just a little bit of the scientific calculator functions. We could do things like cosine, but I won't get into that in this video so it's pretty cool and if you just check out the different there's almost so this cmath library we haven't covered like like in the cmath library there's over like millions of mathematical functions that we can do and in this video we just covered basic arithmetic functions using c++ so we covered addition subtraction multiplication division power square root hypotenuse and circumference and that is our basic calculator in the C++ programming language that's going to run in the console. It took about 180, 177 lines of code. Wait, guys, um, let's first initialize our class. So we created this use class. Now let's use this class. Let's make an instance of this class. So I'll say my app is equal to application. So we're creating an instance of the application. Oh, sorry. I've been too used to writing in the Python programming language, so wrote it in their way. So what you're going to have to say is application, the type, which is type of class application, my app. All we need to say is my app dot run. And yeah, so it took us 180 lines of code to make a basic calculator that runs in the console in the C++ program. So hopefully this really helped beginners get started on their very first project and if you guys love this tutorial, please hit a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell me if this was helpful in your journey in learning C++ in the comments section below. And that is it for this video. And before ending, let's test out our application and run it. Hopefully there's no errors. Let's try. Okay, so this should work. Okay, so it gives us a title, calculator. Choose an operation. Um, wait, hold on, guys. Last thing we need to do is we need to print out the list of operations first. So we're just going to, it's over here. So, bef so we're just going to take this code. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to, um, after printing out the title, we can go over here. And then we're just going to do it. All right. So now when we run the program, it will tell us. Oh, and the array has to be declared over here. So just copy paste the array, and then we'll just go over here. All right, so that was just a bit of modifications, and it should hopefully. Okay, so let's run the program. Let's test out all this 100 and 180 lines of code that we just wrote. Sorry guys, and what we need to do in the for loop 
is we just need column data. It's to print out a line every time. That is. Okay. Okay, so it says calculator gives us a list of operations. So it gives us this addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, proportion. Well, now that I see a list of all the valid operations, let's choose one of these valid operations. Say if I want the circumference. So choose an operation. It gives us a prompt that says choose an operation and it's waiting for input. So now when I just copy paste circumference and I hit enter, it will move on to the next step. So choose an operation. Well, I'm choosing circumference. User choice, circumference of a circle. Okay, so it knows that we chose the circumference operator. That works. So it's identifying that when we type in circumference, it will tell us user choice circumference of a circle. Now it's giving us a new prompt and it's asking us for the radius. So what if my radius was five? It's giving me 31.4159, which should be accurate because we just applied the formula. And obviously computations will not be incorrect as long as you apply the correct formula. So let's try out hypot to find the hypotenuse of triangle. User choice. So when I type in hypot, it's saying, User choice, hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Leg A. Well, say if my leg A was 5. Leg B. Well, what if my leg A was, leg B was 8? Oh, it's returning us something. Invalid operation. Please type in invalid operation. In our list of that. Oh, sorry, guys. If we run that over again, just say hypot. It should work. User choice. 5. Well, there's something wrong with that. Well, let's test out a different operation. So just for your tutorial, I'm going to end off. You guys can, you know, modify this experiment. And yeah, so this was a very cool calculator we made. So I'm just going to say addition 5, 3 plus 3. You know what? Let's just remove this exception for now so we can test it out. Okay? Don't know why that's just okay. Five plus five, and it's telling us it's ten. Let's try subtraction. Choose an operation. I'm gonna say subtraction. Number one. Uh, say, let's give like a number in the ten thousands. Twelve thousand three hundred forty-five. Number two. Uh, let's say five hundred. And then it does twelve thousand three hundred forty-five minus five hundred, and it returns an answer eleven thousand three hundred forty-five. So it can do addition, subtraction. All and yeah, so you guys can test out the other operations in our calculator. And that was it for this video. So we created our very own basic calculator in the C++ programming language. We have all these nice little things that we can do with it. So hope you guys liked the video. Hit the subscribe button if you like this. And yeah, so that was the end of this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it.